y'all, it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman, and my tripod is quite crooked today. Woo! But I can't come over there and fix it, so y'all are going to have to just watch me crooked. Um, somebody asked yesterday what kind of study Bible I was reading out of, and Chris, this is Chris's Bible, and so I was going to tell you the name of it. Uh, it's a really nice Bible. It is called the KJV Study Bible by Holman, H-O-L-M-A-N. Let's see if it's got any more information in it that can help you. It just says King James Version of the Holy Bible, Holman, KJV Study Bible. And um, let's see. Copyright 2012. It has the study notes, the King's English Glossary, the Bible Concordance. Um, so that's uh, the name of it, if y'all were wondering. It's really nice. It's got large text in it, too. Um, it also has an area in the front, which is really nice. This is what it looks like. It's kind of like a darker color with a lighter, kind of a, I guess, burgundy type color in the middle. Um, but it also has a place in the front that it has a lot of helpful stuff in it. It has a uh, study note contributors, and then it has God's plan for salvation in the front. It has steps to a classic, the epistle, uh, wait a minute. This talks about the translators, I guess, of, uh, the translators, the translator to the reader. And then it also has a section, how to study the Bible, how to read and study the Bible. So it's really nice. Um, I mean, we could actually do this. It would be a nice little study book. I mean, a study guide, but I want to do our uh, little study we've been doing. And then if we ever, uh, maybe next year or something, we can hop in the front of this one and, and talk about it today. We are, uh, I still haven't fixed my hair, and I still haven't washed it, and I promise, I hope to goodness tomorrow I get to color it. Chris is home, and so, um, he's came in and started helping me some, and that's nice to have him back. This is Jesus, Our Perfect Hope, 365 Devotions by Charles Stanley. I did a Bible study the other day with, uh, the... My Kindle edition of this up on the TV screen, and I also did a Bible reading from an audio Bible um, through that Bible study. And I had a couple of you say you didn't like that version, um, and I don't really know if the rest of you did, and just a couple didn't, or what. I didn't get a lot of feedback on it, so y'all just let me know. If y'all rather me just sit at the table and do just a simple one like this, it's a lot easier. Uh, but it's just totally up to y'all. Um, this is January the no January the nineteenth. It's Aspire to Service, and um, I didn't turn on my speaker tonight, and I'm so loud. I know y'all can hear me. It says, "Since I, your Lord and Teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet." Now this is out of John chapter thirteen, verse fourteen. And so I'm going to read that uh, portion, a little portion out of the Bible. Uh, I had it on my in my place, and then I picked up my Bible to talk about it. And so let's go to John. That's in the uh, New Testament. There's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's the fourth uh, book in the New Testament, which is a gospel, the book of the Gospels. And this is John 13, if you want to flip over there with me. And tonight I am reading out of my cheap King James Version, which is what I have the most. Really, the only thing I even have in my house is a KJV and a Amplified, which is a KJV Amplified. Uh, that's really all I have. Um, let's see, John 13. Jesus washes the feet of the disciples, okay? Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, 
he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil hanging now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God, he riseth up from supper, laid aside his garments, and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poureth water into a basin, and he began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? And Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do, thou knowest not now. But thou shalt know hereafter. Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet, Jesus. Answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. So he, I guess he thought, Lord, if that's the case, then wash me all over. Um... Jesus said to him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit, and ye are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him, therefore he said, Ye are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet, and had taken his garments, and was sat down again, he said to them, Know ye not what I have done unto you? You call me Master and Lord, and you say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I've given you an example that ye should do as I've done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, The servant is no greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. So that is our scripture that our Bible study comes out of tonight from Charles Stanley. And he says, we often think about the pinnacle of success as being a great leader or achieving astounding feats. Yet, what we read yesterday was that with all power and authority at his disposal, Jesus, oh, wait a minute, yet what we read He's talking about yesterday's reading, but he means just now, because I read it all. Was that with all power and authority at his disposal, Jesus chose to wash the disciples' feet in a beautiful act of service. And the wonderful thing is that he did it in order to help us. When Jesus models what he wants us to do, it is something that any of us can accomplish. We can serve others. The world may not put a premium on what you do, and may even look down on you for it. But when you are lovingly serving others in Jesus' name, you are pleasing the only one who counts, and that is God himself. So don't fret when you're asked to complete a task that appears below you. Instead, think of Jesus serving faithfully and count on the fact that when you Humble yourself in the presence of the Lord. He will exalt you. Lord Jesus, this is his little prayer that he does at the end of every one. Lord Jesus, being humble is difficult, but I will follow your example and serve with love. Amen. He says, my hope is in Jesus because he is the one who gives worth to my service. And this reminds me, um, I used to have a Bible teacher. Her name was Kathy Cochran. And I'll never forget it. This is one thing that she taught me that stuck in my head. And she said, um, you know, when you're down and you feel like you're the only one that scrubs the toilet and you're the only one that washes the clothes and you're really tired of doing it and you get, you know, you kind of feel like you've got a bad attitude. She said, remember that everything we do when we serve our family Think about it as serving the Lord, because we are serving the Lord. 
And think, and think about what he has talked about in here. He says, don't fret when you're asked to complete a task that appears below you. Instead, think of Jesus. Think of Jesus while you're serving, while you're cleaning the house, while you're scrubbing the toilet. Serve faithfully and count on the fact that when you humble yourself in the presence of the Lord, he will exalt you. And that's what she taught us to do as young wives and mothers when we were um, at church. And I really appreciated it because it put me in a different perspective of mind when I went to clean the house. And um, it really did help a lot. So just remember that. Um, it, it, it's just a good thing to think on. If we always think it on the Lord or if we're, if we're, if when we're doing something that we're not that crazy about doing and we think on the Lord, maybe we would enjoy doing it more if we were thinking on the Lord. I'm sure he would delight in the fact that we have him on our minds instead of being mad or angry or upset. So y'all remember that tomorrow as you go out with that, throughout your day or even tonight. Some of you may be working. Some of you could be on a break or some of you may still have clothes to wash or clothes to fold or lunches to make. Um, so y'all just remember that, um, it's good for Chris to be home. We're almost finished working for the day and, um, maybe we'll get to watch a Downton Abbey together. It's going to be nice to have him back home. Um, so I hope y'all have a blessed evening and I will see you tomorrow. And we're going to talk, we're going to talk tomorrow. It says God helps those. God helps those. So it's coming out of Proverbs 27. If you want to look that up. And hopefully, if Lord willing, I will be here tomorrow night. Um, that's Proverbs 27. God helps those. So, um, and in our Bible, if y'all want me to, real quick before we sign off, just because we love to study the Word, don't we? John 13, um, that, that where he says, If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. Now that's verse 14 of John 13, okay? And so I was going to look and see what the study Bible had to say. And of course it has tons to say down here at the bottom about Jesus washing the disciples' feet. And uh, that verse, it says, let's see. Okay, it says references to Jewish religion, religious festivals and the coming of Jesus' hour now cover now converge. Jesus' own refers to the twelve, the representatives of his new messianic community. Did I say that right, Chris? Messianic. I thought so. The practice of foot washing had a long Old Testament tradition. He gives us lots of scripture to look it up and read about uh, foot washing. It says Jesus' performance of this menial task exemplified his humility. Um, that also is referenced out of Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 and 8, if you want to write that down. That's Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 and 8, if you want to write that down and read about it. Um, it says... Um, the rest of this is talking about G uh, Judas Isc uh, Iscariot. So I, I remember I was reading the other day about this very subject. And Chris, you might can help me with this. It said, um, when he says, he that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit, and ye are clean, but not all. And it was talking about, um, do you remember what, what that's referencing about uh, washing his feet, but it, they're, uh, are you listening to me? Well, he says, he that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet. 
but is clean every whit. And ye are clean, but not all. It had to do something to do with, no, he knew that the disciples were saved, so they didn't need to wash their feet for salvation because he says they're clean every whit. Anyway, it was a deeper meaning. See, that's just another one of those things you have to study. And I'm pretty sure that ha it had to do with salvation and how he wasn't telling them they needed to wash their feet to be saved. That's why he says you're clean. Um, but he's letting them know that, um, that there was more to being clean than washing their feet. And, and he lets them know that there was one that wasn't clean, and that was Judas, because he was going to betray him. Um, but the whole reason he was washing their feet wasn't to cleanse them and make them righteous or anything like that. So I think that's why he was saying that. It was more to show them that he loved them and he wanted to serve them. Uh, and we should all want to serve and serve each other and not just be uh, the one getting served. Okay. And so this was a big, huge uh, lesson of humility on our part and for everyone. So Jesus was just an amazing man and God in one. And uh, I thank you for all of the examples he gives us because it helps us learn um, what he would have us be. So um, I'm going to say our prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today and this evening. We uh, thank you for your word, and we thank you for the example that you've given us in your word about washing uh, the disciples' feet. I pray that you would help each and every one of us humble ourselves so that when we're doing a medial task or a task that we may not, we might even think is beneath us, that we would look to you and worship you and uh, be thankful that we're able to do a task. Um, be with us as we go throughout this evening and help us as we go throughout the day tomorrow. Help us always have you on our mind and um, heart and soul and help us to serve others. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I hope y'all had a blessed day and I hope y'all didn't mind watching me crooked. <laughs> I guess I could have done like this the whole time. Bye y'all. Love ya. I got to come over there and turn the thing off. Uh, Patricia's on here, and Velda's on here. Velda says she likes me at the table. You know, when you're sitting at the table, it's easier to do your reading and stuff. I kind of like it, too. I think I'm probably going to uh, start doing it right here. I kind of like it a lot. I like it a lot. I'm going to come and turn it off.